Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. We are going to be doing a soul connection check-in. So this is more for those, generally I will channel more for those who are in either no contact or separation sort of energy. We're going to have a bit of a look at what the connection is looking like, what the divine masculine is looking like, what the divine feminine is energetically looking like as well and then just see where else the reading wants to take us. So let's start with some opening messages here. First we're going to have a look at what the energy of the connection is currently sitting in right now and as always take the messages as they resonate for you if it doesn't seem to resonate if it doesn't fit after the first little bit this reading may not be for you it just might not be a reading today and that is okay so only take what resonates leave whatever doesn't let's get a card for where the connection energy is currently sitting okay first one we have is golden gift magic help is on its way and let's get some pairing messages with this. We have the Page of Crystals. We have Ten of Cups. And one more. And we have Wheel of Fortune. So there is definitely a shift happening in the connection energy at the moment. And we've definitely been feeling this over the past few weeks specifically, very much with Lionsgate. I know with a lot of people, there was a lot of energy that was kind of around thinking that Lionsgate was going to bring through a lot more communication or connection or union or whatever it might have been, depending on your personal situation. And some people might feel a little bit almost, I want to say resentful at the universe that didn't come through. But what I'm really seeing with this is that there are still, there were still karmic patterns, still karmic things that needed to be shifted out for both parties because this is the connection energy. So looking at both parties and how they're sort of closing out um, any karmic situation, any ties that might be binding them to something and really seeing, re-envisioning is what I'm hearing. We're definitely about to step into Mercury Retrograde's energy. We're already in the sort of the pre-space of Mercury Retrograde. And what I'm really hearing is that re-energy. It's always that revisiting, revising, renewal kind of energy, seeing what that Ten of Cups actually feels like for each individual counterpart in these connections, but also that there is new energy coming in. There is communication coming in. I'm definitely feeling this communication out of nowhere is what I'm hearing. If you've been in challenge or separation for a little while and you may have had no contact or communication, it does feel like there is a shift in that that is coming and it will come out of nowhere, coming in fast. With this golden gift, the universe is like, the way I'm really seeing this and feeling this is the universe has been working in the background, really supporting both counterparts, both people in this connection to realign themselves to what is true to them, to what is golden within and what I'm really seeing with this with the light here as well is really, it's almost like reestablishing the light within so that you're not draining the energy or the light from someone else, especially from your counterpart's energy. Both pe people, both counterparts need to go through this initiation into their own light so that no one is out of balance here. That's how I'm seeing this, like the, the connection energy, where the connection energy currently is. But this connection energy feels so yummy it just feels so delicious it's got this beautiful energy that so much has shifted things have been realigning chapters have to be closed out karmic contracts have to be tidied up and i am seeing and hearing that there's like loose ends that are being tidied up right now not everything that you sort of see in the external world is true really trust in your intuition trust in your inner knowing but that things are always trying to rebalance and close out these cycles, these attachments, any kind of karmic debt, any kind of karmic contracts, but also there is some, there's some shadow dependency around codependency, toxic behaviors, manipulation, any kind of threads like that, that are coming through. All of this is being closed out right now is what I'm hearing. So if you or your counterpart is either in a connection or has been in a connection, or you have a pattern of behavior around codependency or toxic sort of patterns in behaviors in relationship those are the things that have been worked out right now and Lionsgate really did offer a lot of new insight a lot of new light into that is what I'm hearing that this golden energy of Lionsgate because I always see Lionsgate as a very golden energy that that was helping to shift all of this energy to bring it into a higher alignment for what is wanting to come through for the connection 
What a beautiful opening message there for the connection energy. Let's get a an energy read on the Divine Masculine. Where is the Divine Masculine's energy currently sitting? Okay. I actually am feeling two cards here, so I'm going to take both. We're only meant to be having one of these, but we have Secret Doorway. Working with intuition, second sight opening, dimensional doorways. So they could be currently, what I'm actually hearing with that is they might be currently experiencing sort of secrets if they are um, either with someone else, if they have any kind of karmic things they're dealing with. What I'm seeing with that or feeling with that is that things are operating in secret, things are operating behind closed doors. So there might be some stuff they're personally working with and dealing with that they haven't really let anyone in on is how I'm seeing that. Like they're doing it behind closed doors. They're doing it so they don't bring this energy into someone else's space, someone else's field. They don't want to be a burden is what I'm hearing with that. The second card, what are we, is Stardust. It says premonition, galactic communication, beginnings and endings. So there is definitely some energy shifting here. We did have with this beautiful second side opening, intuition and premonition. So we do have these two energies of they might be receiving more insight, more information for their own sort of journey. Maybe they are starting to see things playing out a different way than they expected. I'm really feeling that they are starting to learn new truths here and they're not listening to their mind as much as they're listening to their intuition. So taking that only as it resonates for you and your personal journey. Let's see what else we have. Let's get three extra messages for the Divine Masculine's energy. We have Eight of Stars, which is our Eight of Pentacles energy. We have the Eight of Crystals. And final one is Death. So... Divine Masculine's energy, there is a lot going on here. There is obviously a lot of work that's been happening behind the scenes. I just keep hearing that. So much work is happening behind closed doors. They are keeping it secret. They are keeping it protected. It's like they're not letting anyone in on their on their, on their their own journey, on their own story. They're not letting anyone in on what they're thinking, what they're feeling right now. They're very, very secretive. They're keeping things like I want to say under lock and key is how I'm seeing that message. And they might be becoming more masterful of their intuition. What I'm really seeing with this is there might have been a denial of their intuition for a really long time. It's almost like they didn't trust their intuition. They have trusted their mind over everything else. And what I'm seeing with this is they're starting to become more masterful of their intuition. They're starting to trust it. They're starting to feel how that is actually supporting them and guiding them to get out of the, the situation they're in. They have created the situation they're in. And this with the death and the eight of crystals, they have created this, like, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy that everything that they thought they wanted didn't turn out to be exactly what was promised. And they have got this, like, the cage of their own making kind of energy. And this is where they're currently working through. They're currently allowing things in their life to die off. But they're doing this in secret is what I'm hearing. They understand that they're here now. It's almost like they didn't see it until now. They didn't see that this was the the path of their own creation that they have created a self, a self isolating, a self um, contained sort of cage. And I do love the fact that we said under lock and key here. And a lot of the times with the eight of swords, eight of crystals energy, there can be an expression of lock and key caged energy, but they also have the ability to break themselves out of that. So there is definitely a lot of shifting energy happening here. And it feels it feels like for their own personal journey, they are still working through a lot of challenge. So what else can we see? But they are understanding, they're getting new communication. They are starting to understand what their purpose is, what their life path is. I'm really seeing for the Divine Masculines, they have gone off path. They've gone off purpose. They haven't been doing what they've wanted to do in a lot of ways. They've kind of been in this, I want to say chop wood, carry water energy. That's how it feels. Chop wood, carry water, just continue making sort of like making ends meet, just continuing on the, with their day, doing the best they can to survive is how I'm really feeling this energy. But they're starting to see a different pathway. They're starting to see that there's got to be more to life than that. They want more to life than that. 
Let's see what the Divine Feminine's energy is currently looking like. Okay, we have carry me home, support, time to be carried, allow others to help. So Divine Feminine's, <laughs> it might be that you're finally in a surrendered state to allow others to help. This is this has definitely been my personal journey, <laughs> is allowing for support, allowing for other people to help me. I really do struggle with that. I've always been a very independent person and I've really struggled to let people support me, to let people take care of me because I'm always the one that just, I'm like, I'll take care of everyone else. So I can definitely feel this for myself as well, but it's allowing yourself to be vulnerable, allowing yourself to be supported, allowing yourself to be helped so that you don't have to be the one that's carrying the load all the time. What I'm definitely seeing with this as well, for many divine feminines, in a lot of ways, we feel like we have to be the one that saves the divine masculine or that we have to be the one that's kind of carrying and supporting them more than we allow them to carry and support us. Not that they don't want to, but we as feminines can sometimes resist that. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups now. We can sometimes resist that because in a past experience, it might have had fear coming up with that. There might have been some kind of challenge with that. So I'm definitely seeing this, the way this is playing out is that maybe this is your season when you finally started to surrender into receiving help from others, allowing yourself to be more open, allowing someone to take care of you for once. That's kind of how I'm seeing this energy. Let's see what else is coming up here. We have the Ace of Stars. New offerings coming in. The universe is offering you something brand new. This is our Ace of Pentacles. What was, you know, I always see this as what once was blind, you know, now I see kind of energy. It's like what was once hidden in the shadows or once hidden in the clouds, you're now starting to see the gift of this, the, the insight, the illumination of this. You can start to see the pathway ahead. It may not be fully clear yet, but you're starting to see the illumination point allowing that North Star energy to guide you here and allowing yourself to really connect into what is your what is your soul's true path. Don't deviate from that. Don't allow anybody else to take you off of that either. In the reading I did before this one, um, I was speaking about the song from Moana. So if you didn't hear that one, the, the, the part in um, the movie that the grandmother says, you are your father's daughter, stubbornness and pride. Um, mind what he says, but remember, you may hear a voice inside. And if that voice starts to whisper, to follow the father's star, Moana, that voice inside is who you are. So following that father's star, that farthest star, not the father's star. And allowing yourself to be carried into that, allowing yourself to be carried on the path is what I'm hearing. It's almost like allowing the universe to carry you on the path, offering, like opening up to the offering from the universe for that support as well. But if that voice inside you is calling, follow it. Don't allow anybody else to take you off your path. Okay, let's see what else for our divine feminine. We have the four of wands energy. So this is, you know, our beautiful celebration. This is coming together. This is the union energy. What I'm hearing here is hold, hold that image, hold that energy strong within your center. Hold it like it is the most valuable thing in your world. And I'm not saying hold out for hope, hold on to a divine masculine that isn't showing up or anything like that, but hold on to whatever it is that that North Star energy is for you. Hold on to that and don't let it go. Don't allow other people to take you off the path that is creating, that is building into what it is that you are going to have the ultimate celebration energy of. I'm just really hearing like, hold on to that star. And the star is our, you know, our star, our traditional star in the major arcana is also our hope. It's our destined path energy. I'm just really hearing, hold on to that star, hold on to that North star energy. Don't let it, I want to say, don't let it go. Don't let yourself be pulled off of that pathway. What else can we see? But be open and receptive to being supported and helped by the universe. And we have Eight of Cups. Knowing when to walk away and knowing when to stay. Walking away from what doesn't serve you so that you can create space for the new. So, you know, you may be walking away from, as a Divine Feminine, you may be walking away from 
old beliefs, old patterns. It could be walking away from people. It could be that you've had new insights and you understand that you need to follow your North Star and allow yourself to move forward in that. But also what I'm hearing here is using your discernment. Don't allow yourself to be pulled away from your path by someone else, but use your discernment to know what is true for you. There is a time and a place to hold on and there is a time and a place to let go so I love the fact that we've got hold on and let go at the same time hold on to that hope hold on to that star and let go of what isn't serving you here so it's like let go of the illusions as well let go of any negative beliefs any old outdated patterns old templates letting go of past held energies past held identities and hold on to that north star so let go of the south node work on the north node let go of the old energies focus on that north star I just keep seeing this pattern playing out so hold on to what you know is true for you and one of my favorite cards in any deck is defend to the end of the worthwhile and it's in Alana Fairchild's the sacred rebels deck and that's what I'm really feeling here defend to the end of the worthwhile and let everything else go it can all just be dissipated okay let's have a look at I'm just going to keep using these two decks because I'm really feeling this beautiful energy here what else can we see here coming up I want to see future potentials here what can we see for future energies coming forward in this connection, this dynamic? We have stolen her sleep, unaware, unconscious, unawakened. So it could be that there is still some unconscious patterns, unconscious beliefs that are coming up. There could be things that you are still unaware of. I'm just hearing with this here because we've got all these little goblins, goblins trying to like pull the energy down. The other thing that I'm really seeing here with this as well is... Don't allow that goblin energy. The goblin the goblin energy is all those old fears, negative beliefs, those unconscious thoughts. Don't allow the shadow aspect. Don't allow these like inner goblins to pull you down. So this is like what's potentially coming up is that you might have these moments of doubt, of fear. Don't allow the goblins to take you off path. But also what I'm seeing with this as well, what I'm hearing is as potential coming forward is other people within your connection in some capacity could also try to like pull you apart, pull you away. That's really what I'm feeling with that is don't allow anybody else outside of you dictate your path, pull you outside of your dream. I'm also seeing that reverie and dream. Don't allow someone else to steal your dreams. Hold strong on those dreams. What else can we see? We have the hanged man. So there's still a little bit of time is what I'm hearing with this. There's still a little bit of time. There's still a little bit of pause. I'm seeing for some it might be, you know, about two months. That's I'm hearing that. That's very specific for some. And don't worry about timelines or anything like that. Just trusting in your own journey. What else can we see here? We have the four of crystals. Again, pause, time. We have this like sleep. There is still a pause here. There is a lot shifting. There's definitely a lot of energy shifting but it doesn't necessarily mean things are ready to fully come into fruition here. So this is like what's coming up in the sort of very near future energy. Oh, and then we have the self, which is a, it's an individual card in this deck. It's one of the major arcana cards. It's a new, it's a extra major arcana. And this is all about the self reflecting. So there's still some self reflection to take place around these unconscious thoughts, unconscious beliefs, the, the, the way that other people or your thoughts sort of dictate your path a little bit here. So there's still a lot of time for self-reflection. Four of Crystals to me is the ultimate rest and recuperation, time for, to go into the liminal for self-reflection. So there is still a pause happening here. What I'm going to ask now is for some guidance. What do we need to see guidance-wise to support us in moving forward on our path? We're going to get three of these guidance coming through we have queen of swords we have three of cups and one more we have, this is for guidance that we're seeking here and we have this is the hierophant so tradition energy so, Queen of Arrows, Three of Cups, and Tradition, Hierophant Energy. What I actually heard as soon as I pulled the Queen of Arrows 
<laughs> we was, and this is Venus, obviously we're in Venus right now. Venus energy, we've got a lot of that going on right now. With this Queen of Arrows, the message I got was know who the F you are. That's your guidance right now, is know who the F you are. There is no messing about with the Queen of Arrows. She doesn't mess about. I want to say a different word there, but I'll say mess. She don't F about, right? She knows who she is. She is very, very strong-willed, very independent. But the other side of that is allowing yourself to soften your independence or your need to be right, your need for things to work in your own way or your perfect timeline. But really know who you are. Know who you are at your core because that is what is going to magnetize this energy because if you don't know who you are how can you expect anybody else to love you for who you don't know who you are right there's this energy of that but then there's three of cups coming in this is celebration is joyful coming together and but what i'm really seeing with this is celebrate the small moments celebrate all the moments that you can in your life find joy in the mundane is how i'm hearing that and seeing that and then this tradition romeo and juliet you know this is the beautiful epitome of soul connection of twin flame connection is romeo and juliet we also do have it in other sort of archetypal energies throughout history but this is about breaking free of tradition breaking free of the norm allowing yourself to move beyond the constructs of what you think it needs to look like or what you think it needs to be or what you think other people want it to be and really following what your soul's truth here is but really as well, the, the the original with the Hierophant, yes, it can be the teacher and mentor, but when we look at certain decks, specifically this one, this is all about coming together. This is all about the union. This is all about allowing yourself to come into that sort of the, the physical, practical essence of marriage, but also at the energetic point as well. So I'm really seeing this is allowing yourself to connect into what that would feel like for you breaking free of any sort of traditional norms and opening yourself up to receive what your truth in this is. So really beautiful messages coming through with that. I'm just going to see if there's any final messages we need here today. We're just going to get, okay, we're going to get three of these, three of these messages. Just some energetic, energetic guidance, energetic space. Ooh, we have sensuality. The frequency of sensuality reminds us that as spirits in human bodies, we are sensual beings experiencing joy and pleasure from the physical world through our senses. So sensuality is literally experiencing the world through senses. That's what it means. That's how we can connect to that. Different from our sexuality, our sexual energy is our shakti. It's our life force. Our sensuality is our ability to use that shakti life force energy and work with the senses or communicate through the senses. But allowing yourself to tap into that sensual expression to really feel feel into that inner seductress energy and open yourself to receive that frequency, reminding yourself to experience the joy and the pleasure in life, reminding yourself that life is meant to be lived and experienced through all of the senses and not kind of waiting for anything here. And then we have grace. The frequency of grace supports our smooth adapt adaption to and anticipation of life's currents and changes as we evolve toward a higher version of ourselves on this earthly plane bringing the divine with the human essence so my favorite way of seeing grace is make space for grace grace to me is the the epitome of us being able to sit in that receivership in the receptive energy of what is for us and you know i also my favorite way of putting um giving and receiving is give with grace, receive with gratitude. So if we give with grace, we're giving from a very open place, a very loving place. There's no expectation on that. And then we receive with gratitude. But feeling at this at the essence of grace to me is really the epitome of allowing yourself to be, as I said, open and receptive to what the universe has in store for you, but also that kindness, that compassion, that beautiful sort of space within the hearts. This is a very heart frequency here as well. Let's get one more of these. Final card here we have is integrity. The energy of integrity supports our choice to be consistently truthful and honest while being guided by moral higher standards, so high moral standards. So what I'm hearing with this is are you being true to yourself? You know, we can, we can talk a big talk. Sorry about that. I just had to pause there for a moment because I actually have got a really bad cough. 
that just came on. So we're just going to finish this up. So as I said, like talking the talk, we need to walk the walk is kind of where I was finishing up with this integrity. So allowing yourself to really honor where you are, being truthful to yourself. Are you lying to yourself in any other, in any way and really, really holding yourself strong in that integrity as you navigate this path? I'm going to leave the reading there because I'm starting to lose my voice again. <clears throat> I'm so sorry about that. Um, but if you have any questions, as always, let me know. If you would like to book a reading or anything like that specifically, everything is linked below.